Aloha and welcome to Talk Story with John Waihei. We have a very important subject to discuss this afternoon, and it affects the health and welfare of our community. And this is the issue is in regard to the situation at, uh, at uh, Red Hill, where the Navy currently has some fuel storage tanks up there. And it's become a controversial issue because as many people can tell you, as a number of people can tell you, they, a number of experts can tell you that the fuel tanks are not really secure. And so I brought the, our guest this afternoon is Melody Adupa, uh, who, um, you know, to tell you, Melody, this is, this is so generational because, you know, your father and I were in politics together over the years. And, and here we are. And, you, you know, you are, let, let me describe you as, well, you're a retired lawyer, so you've got a good legal background. But more importantly, you're a full-time dedicated Democratic Party activists. And I am, um, and you're very much involved with the Red Hill situation. I actually, for the audience uh, edification, I actually heard re in recent years about the uh, situation at, at Red Hill, oh, maybe three or four years ago for Melody. Uh, we were, I was at the meeting and you said, you know, this is a big issue and we should be paying more attention to it. And here we are today as a state, front and center on all of it. So welcome. We, we have, I appreciate you deciding to, uh, to uh, accept my invitation uh, to be on this uh, program. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know, first of all, give us a little bit about your Democratic Party pedigree so that we know uh, people out there when I, know what I mean when I say activists. I, I know you're chair and co-chair of a number of party caucuses, right? Yes. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Governor. And I really do appreciate this opportunity to meet with you and to be interviewed by you on this very important topic, very front and center in everyone's minds at this point. Uh, yes, I am the co-chair of the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party, along with my other co-chair, who is Alan Burdick. And I'm also the chair of the health committee and i also serve as second vice chair of the hawaiian affairs caucus i'm treasurer of the women's caucus and i'm vice chair of the kupuna caucus so yeah i i do wear a lot of well i tell you what tyler tyler um uh, who uh you're the party chairman yes when, mm -hmm. uh, when i i talked to him about i said i was going to have you on the show and he said oh she's the de facto leader of the you know <laughs> of the whole movement uh, with regard to red hill so here you are now tell us a little bit about the issue why what's going on and why is it important for the people of hawaii to know about okay yeah it is very important and as you had mentioned earlier uh the environmental caucus through what was a subject committee of the environmental caucus that i was a chair of uh, for several years I, I believe this issue came up in 2017 2018 uh, we've passed a resolution at that time that we are to look at the uh, seriousness and the risk and the dangerousness of red hill and it was passed by the democratic party and so at that point we started having uh, through the environmental caucus, uh, I guess they would be uh, forums. You know, I met with um, Ernie Lau and Erwin Kawata, a board of water supply. That's how that all started. And they came to the headquarters and we had several meetings and we learned more and more as to what they wanted as as the uh, managing director and head um, engineer of the Board of Water Supply. And of course, they are responsible or Board of Water Supply is responsible for all of the drinking water of the city and county of Honolulu. And we learn that these 80-year-old um, tanks, which is our 20 tanks up on Halava, Red Hill, and they're huge. They're, they're 
they're humongous. I mean, you're looking. Yeah, I, I think at, there was a description saying that you could fit. Uh, I, I don't know. You could fit Aloha Tower in these tanks. Is that pretty much the size of it? Yes, that's correct. Because the height is like 250 feet high and 100 feet across. So it's it's huge. And so anybody that wants to know how big the tanks are, just go down and look at Aloha Tower and think of if you had to cover it, that's what one tank would be the size of one tank. I yes, know. yes, wow, and absolutely. Fantastic. And we have 20 of them built up there. Twenty. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I continue with your with, with your explanation. So you 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 had these meetings and what what caused you to go and decide that this was something you ought to be looking into? What what was it? Was there some kind of telltale? Yeah, de definitely. Well, of course, in 2014 when there was that uh, first bill, and I'm calling it first because that's when it was first became public knowledge of 27,000 gallons of petroleum. And for the longest time, I believe it was Red Hill was classified until until 1990s or thereabouts. So we didn't even know that this fuel tank, underground fuel tank facility uh, existed. And then when we found out about this massive uh, petroleum spill, then it was very concerning. And I have asked the Navy because they've had several meetings and I've attended, and this is the fuel tank advisory committee meetings at the Capitol. And I've asked them what happened to the 27,000 gallons of petroleum that leaked out in 2014. Yeah, and what happened? What, what did they do with it? I mean, nothing, Governor. I mean, there's really nothing you can do. That's, that's the so, issue. So, I mean, it leaks out and you just let it go you don't clean it up you don't do something with it well, you know it's going into the the porous basalt rock so you know it's not like i suppose if it was something you could skim like in the ocean and then you can put those uh, orange things and kind of round it up but that's not what's going on because what it does it's going into the groundwater and so it's little pockets here and there in the ground that it's entering and then eventually will go into our sole source aquifer and it's called a sole source aquifer because it supplies 77 percent of the water for city and county of honolulu which is so now, so now this this twenty seven thousand gallons of that's lost already that is going to just pollute water somewhere where it has polluted water already probably yes because aren't there reports of the presence of gasoline or something in the at least in at least at the navy housing where apparently yes. it would be the first uh first area affected by a spill yeah evidently the uh Red Hill Well, which is owned by the Navy, which supplies military housing and some civilian housings at uh, Iloquois Point has been affected, not particularly from the 2014 spill, but we've had a huge spill in this past year. In fact, this one, they're relating it to the November 20th spill, which was 14,000 gallons of petroleum plus water. So that's November 20th, that was Thanksgiving weekend. And it was that spill that somehow got into the Red Hill well, and then onto the pipelines to the military housing in Iroquois Point. Well, and let and me now, ask you. Governor, if Go I may, they are yeah. also tying that last spill with an earlier spill on May 6th. Initially, the Navy indicated that the May 6 spill was only 1,600 gallons, and they were able to recover most of it. But subsequently, we're learning it's not 1,600 gallons, but rather it was 19,000 gallons. Wow, that's a big difference. Very that's big. A big difference. So you're trying to say at least since at least since uh, uh, 2014. The yes. 2014, that was 27,000. 
Yes. And then there's 14,000 and then yep. there's 19,000. So yep. altogether we're looking, I'm doing some quick math. We're looking at something like almost 50,000, well, over 50,000 gallons. I, yes, of close gasoline to 60,000 gallons. Close to 60,000 gallons yes. within this sh short period. And, and well, I mean, that's just amazing to me now. <laughs> are you just finding this out isn't there some kind of regular reporting whenever <laughs> yes, doesn't, yes. The, doesn't the isn't the navy or somebody obligated to report whenever a spill occurs but absolutely absolutely governor but that's the problem the department of health is only receiving the reports insofar as the navy reports them but from what we've seen, the Navy has not been quick in reporting, especially with the May 6th, because in February, that's when they were having the contested case hearing on whether or not the Department of Health should grant a permit so that the Navy can con continue its operations at Red Hill. And so the, they, in order to do it, in order to for the Navy to, the, to have the operations, they're needs to be a permit from the Department of Health? There is now. This okay. is actually the first time. Prior to that, there was no requirement for a permit. So now they have to, now they have to seek approval in order to operate. However, they are able, you know, previously, now they're shut down, but previously they were able to operate pending the granting of the permit. Well, in fact, let's discuss that because we have a viewer question, and, and that's the question. Okay. And, and basically, it says, was, were there any previous uh, permits granted? And if so, um, did the Department of Health, were, who, who's, who, who had the bad record? I mean, was this a case of up until, say, 2014 and present day? Was the situation at Red Hill a case of poor reporting, no regulation, or poor regulation? I mean, wasn't the Department of Health or the authorities, shouldn't they have been monitoring the situation? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say all three. Poor reporting, you know, poor regulating, and, and no need for a permit until recently. So, oh, people, mm -hmm. and because it was declassified, I mean, yeah, it was declassified. Oh, it was classified. You mentioned it. Was classified. That. Yes, exactly. But then, so when, you what, talk, when it's classified, what exactly does that mean? I mean, so does that mean uh, that the, you can't get regulated? You can't know anything about it, or, or, or you can't tell anything about it. You can tell. Yes. Yes. I tell you what, we are going to take a short break soon, uh, right about now. And th this, that seemed like a really important question, which will take some time to answer. So, Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program comes on every other Monday, 1 o'clock. And we talk about a lot of different subjects, all of them law related in some way, either life, or practice. And I try to have a diversity of guests that can talk about different topics of interest. So please join us. Think Tech Hawaii, Law Across the Sea program, every other Monday, one o'clock in the afternoon. Aloha. I'm Prince Dykes, the host of the Prince of Investment, the financial literacy and business show that comes to you live every other Thursday at 4 p.m. Hawaii time. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and wherever you can catch podcasts. I'll see you there. Welcome back to this very important uh, show this afternoon with Melody Aduha, who is the Democratic activist, the de facto head of the, as far as the Democratic Party is concerned, regarding the issue of Red Hill. And actually, a, a long time 
uh, whistleblower in a sense, public whistleblower on this issue. Now, wasn't, you know, the okay, so the Department of Health goes in and regulates this at the, at the moment. Uh, there a, a, there's a, a, one of the questions coming in from a listener is, was the Department of Health or is the Department of Health aware of the apparently the Department of Defenses, the Federal Department of Defenses past record of, of poorly uh, protecting communities with portable water supplies and poor, just poor record performing. And was this ever known? I mean, was this something that, uh, that the local authorities are aware of? I mean, do they... Or is that true? I mean, I don't know whether the statement is correct. I mean, it's, been, it's called in. So uh, does the Department of Defense have a poor record of reporting and protecting portable water or reporting any injury to it? Governor, that is definitely true. I think the reporting has been slow and not forthcoming. And um, you know, we've... We've, we've, uh, we've filed a notice of intent uh, in the federal court to file a RICRA lawsuit. And when I say we, 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 you know, I am one of the potential plaintiffs because you've got a 90 day notice and we're coming up to the 90 day notice in which will give us then the opportunity to file the lawsuit under RICRA, which is Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. And um, it's dealing with hazardous waste and it's based on how the Red Hill has operated and how it's taken care of the leaks or, or not taken care of the leaks and not done the prevent preventative measures in which it was supposed to. For example, during the contested case hearing, lots of evidence came out that these tanks, being that they're 80 years old, some of them have not been tested, not been tested as to, you know, holding its, it, doing it, being able to handle that much fuel, which each tank holds 12.5 million gallons of fuel. So those tanks should be tested on a regular basis. Some of them have not been tested for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Oh, incredible. Yes. Incredible. And these tanks, when they were built in the 1940s, the steel lining or the steel part of the tank was only constructed with a quarter inch uh, thickness of steel. And then it's encased between two and four feet, maybe more of porous concrete. And so over the years, that steel has corroded. It has deteriorated. And there are some and areas. The concrete, if it's porous, must be must be full of fuel. That, or I, mean, I would think, yes. right? Yes, some something that is causing more of the corrosion between the concrete and the steel, so that the steel itself now could be at the very thinnest part, as thin as the side or the thickness of a dime, the side of a dime now. Wow. And you're dealing with 12.5 wow. million gallons. Yeah, wow. so that's a lot of pressure. And given that there's no way to monitor in between the cement and the steel, the only way you can check for this deterioration is from the interior. And that means someone would have to go in, like on a scaffold, and that's very, like I said, 250 feet tall and look and eyeball and basically check to see from the inside of the tank whether the corrosion that began in the outside of the tank is coming through and causing, causing you know, gaps or leaks. Uh, you know, so, that's, that's, that's incredible. So, <laughs> the, I, I mean, I, I'm here just, you know, stunned by that statement. And... Um, the, why? Why doesn't now this is another viewer question? What you know? Because there are other communities that face this same situation, yes. and it's, that's happening here. Why doesn't the somebody require the Department of Defense to keep a national inventory of what's happening to their uh, fuel storage like this that may be contaminating contaminating? Yes. Or, or there should be a national standard, because we know, and uh, uh, Camp 
uh, Ketsep, I believe, in Manchester, Washington. They have similar tanks built in the, for World War II, and those tanks were shuttered and they were rebuilt above ground. So you can check when there's leaks and deterioration in the tank itself. And of so course- they have, the, the Navy has uh, uh, done a, a, humiliation, a, a, a remediation Yes. Of other areas where they store fuel. fuel. Yes, exactly. And and the other one is in North Carolina, Camp Lejeune. Also, that's not Navy though, that's Marine. However, similar underground tanks were then shuttered and above ground tanks were erected. Now, why would they do it there, in which it probably was not affecting a sole source aquifer like it is here? And here we are with those 20 tanks, albeit I believe only 18 are operational. And we're over a sole source aquifer with only a, a depth of 100 feet from the bottom of the tank and the top of the aquifer or the groundwater. And, and we are, or that is, Red Hill is the largest, largest collection of diesel fuel, and JP5, JP8, which is jet fuel, which is the highest, most toxic, high in octane, because it's for the fighter pilots, fighter jets. And yet, uh, we're not- Well, let's get into, let's get into that. Ba ba uh, you know, like worst case scenario, Wor worst case scenario. Okay. Because, uh, you know, I, I've heard now that the department, uh, the water, uh, what is it? It's called not water department. <laughs> board of water supply. Water, water supply. The board of water supply uh, had basically stopped uh, stop using water from some of those wells for the general yes. public, right? Yes, What's the worst right. case scenario? What would happen if these the fuel uh, leaked down into the aquifer? Would that mean that essentially our water supply would not be usable or, I mean, what, what does it mean for the people of the island? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's what would happen. And that's why Ernie Lau and Erwin Kawata closed down the Halava well and the Halava shaft and the Iaea shaft, because they are afraid. We, they, they use the example that the uh, Red Hill well, which the Navy has, it's, it's taking water out of the same cup or the same aquifer. So what they are draining or you know, extracting, it's the same thing that we would be or the Board of Water Supply would be extracting. And there is a risk that that plume from the right. Red Hill well will migrate. And if it migrates into the Board of Water Supplies um, uh, Halava well and Halava shaft and Iaea shaft, then yes, that will contaminate. It would contaminate the Board of Water Supply or you know, from Moana Lua to Hawaii Kai. That is well, the risk. And it's, it's my understanding of the aquifer is that that water can't be just re uh, replaced overnight. I mean, it's not like you turn on a faucet and turn. I mean, this is water that's accumulated over years, right? Exactly. I don't. I. It's irreplaceable. I. I don't see how it could be replaced. I and mean, we've seen the Navy attempting to have their Navy divers go into the Red Hill well and extract that. You know, their contaminants or the petroleum that's skimming the top. But you really, you really can't. And I think that's really concerning. It's the same thing now when they're trying to flush out the pipes and flush out the homes. Right, we've got 9,000 military homes and some civilian homes that are affected. And they are flushing it out with we, what- You need to tell me this thing is bad enough that they admit that, that they would need to go and flush out individual homes yeah. and oh, their yeah. pipes yes. And yes. right now. Yes. Well, you know, I don't want to throw, I don't, I don't want to, you know, do the, add to the fear mongering or sound like a fear monger about this whole thing. But as I sit here and listen to you, we're talking about the aquifer, we're talking about the destruction of our uh, water source, and that's terrible enough. But I can't help but thinking those are fuel tanks. And if they're leaking, what would happen if somebody was to throw a match up there? And you had that much fuel, that much combustible material that was evaporating. 
I mean, at least they, I don't know what it's like for uh, up there, but I would assume if it's like any other place where gasoline leaks, there's a vapor that's very combustible that comes out. I mean, we could have, in addition to the destruction of our water, a huge explosion, couldn't we? I mean, I, 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 I or do you know? Or is this something? Oh, no, no. Yeah, definitely. Because we're, we're looking at you know, 2.5 miles of pipeline, three pipelines in an underground, you know, there's two underground uh, tunnels. You know, one, I guess one is maintenance and the other one is, is to watch uh, those pipelines. And that's how the, supposedly, from what we're last told, the November 20th, 14,000 gallons leaked is because a golf cart or whatever it is that they use during, in the underground tunnel somehow ruptured the pipe. And this was a pipe that had a mixture of petroleum and water in a fire suppression drain. And from what I gathered from the news, the military wasn't even aware that that petroleum water mixture was even there. Is so it flammable? Not, is any of this oh, flammable? Highly, highly, I would say yes, it is highly flammable. If you were to go into the underground tunnel, you'd have to be careful that nothing metal scrapes anything that might cause a spark. What then, would, I mean, what has anybody looked into in addition to the destruction of the aquifer, which by the way would happen if this so, what would happen to this island if, if what, is it 18 tanks that blew up? I mean, why are we worried about uh, North Korea when, uh, you know, shooting missiles at our place when we got a, a bunch of tanks like that, which not only are toxic, but flammable? I, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, 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 you know, if I'm adding something out there that's not correct, but as I sit here and, and listen to you, I, I can't help but think that this is horrendous. The, the, the potential of what can happen to Oahu is just it's unthinkable. Yes. yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not just, you know, so far we're hearing it's human error or, or it could be an O-ring or it could be, you know, some, somehow a wrong valve. There's also nature. There's also the risk of earthquakes. If an earthquake oh, wow. happened, then yes, all of that fuel is, is going to go. And it can, because it's gravity pull, from what I've right. gathered, it can, it can release 24,000 gallons of fuel a minute. It's like, wow. you know, you hit a fire hydrant and it's going to gush. <laughs> wow. You know, and the thing about it, you know, you know, the, and the fuel floats on the top of water. You know what I'm saying? So when it burns, for example, if that was to happen, it, it would be an inferno. Yeah, and, 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 and as well as the destruction. You know, unfortunately, for this very interesting conversation, we are out of time. Oh, no. <laughs> and oh, no. I, know, I know we've got <laughs> more time, but I know the, the last question is, okay. I guess, well, just tell us, the Democratic Party, who some people have accused of being of getting soggy in its old age, has come out and actually organized protests yes. against this. So direct yes. action is that normal? I mean, what what and this is as is as serious enough that the party itself uh, is not just talking about lobbying and going to going through the normal process. But going out there and actually uh, having protests at Red Hill and at Pearl Harbor and the rest, is that, is that happening? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because well, it, where can people go us. to get more information about helping you uh, with that? Oh, oh, gosh, that would be great. Uh, they can email me. My email is legislativepriorities at gmail.com. They can join the Democratic Party. And, can they uh, call Democratic Party headquarters and get the yeah, information? They can do that. Uh, they can join the Environmental Caucus, and, and I do a lot of the emails. And every time we have an event come up, I try to get as many participants as possible. But yeah, this is something that's so large that we really need to get everyone involved. 
everyone. It, it can't be something that's just paperwork. I mean, it can't be something that we can just lobby. It, we've got everybody's involved. If, if you can just imagine if we did have a catastrophic release, I mean, everything that we know, life as we know, it's going to change. It's going to change. Right now, the military families have to, and those that live in the barracks, they have to drink water, bottled water. So what happens with their, you know, able to take a bath, able to wash their dishes, able to wash their clothes, able to, you know, take oral hygiene, their whole, their, everything changes because of that. Why? Because their water is contaminated and it's contaminated because of Red Hill. So this is what I want to say before we end is that look at the four Ds. All right. I, four, go Democrat. ahead. Go ahead. You okay. got the last word. Four Ds, okay, aside from being a Democrat. <laughs> okay, first D, drain the tanks. Second D, D, dismantle Red Hill. Third D, decommission Red Hill. Fourth D, decontaminate. That's the four Ds, okay? Right now, we're going a little bit backwards. We're going decontaminate, hopefully, by flushing with this... Um, uh, coal activated filter system, which actually what it does, I'm not even sure it can do what it's a, the Navy is purporting that it can do, because it might be able to take away the smell and the odor, but what about the contaminants itself? Right. In actuality, we need something stronger. We need reverse osmosis. We need to treat the petroleum like it is, which is hazardous waste. We have to separate it from the water. We have to treat it, contain it, and put it in a hazardous waste, um, you know, burial, disposal, disposal well, or burn it, insinuate it. But we can't just, we can't just let it go down Halava Stream. Well, I hope, I hope people, go down you know, Harbor. I, I, I hope a lot of people heard, heard you this afternoon, because I think Thank your you. message is extremely important. Unfortunately, we are up, and I want to thank you so much oh. for coming on, uh, talk story with John Waihe'e. Oh, and thank I you, John. I hope that this, uh, and I wish you well, uh, and we all should get behind this very important issue. I, I hope everyone does. We need a task force. We need, we need a hub. We need a hub of information so we know what the DOH is doing. We know what EPA is doing. We know what the Navy is doing. And there's a check and balance and make sure everybody is working together for the proper thank reasons. You. Proper Absolutely. Reasons. Right? And, Which before, is. and before Eric uh, has a heart attack, <laughs> we want to thank everybody. Aloha, <laughs> everyone, for uh, joining us and thanking our guest this afternoon, Melody. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, everyone. Very important issue. Aloha. Aloha.